Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Past few episodes we've gone ahead, haven't really changed much about the application itself, but instead we've kind of been teetering with this idea of launching the application on the Google Play Store, so we're setting some things up here. So again, the application hasn't changed much, but outside of the app, we have created a Firebase project. We do have our Android application up and running, connected to it. Uh, you know, not the most glorious dashboards because it's literally just me at the moment, but over the last few episodes, we've really kind of hit Crashlytics on the head here to really understand how to use this brilliant tool here that's offered in this uh, platform and, you know, kind of covered a whole bunch of different things you can do inside of Crashlytics to really just provide the users the best possible time when using your app. Uh, so if you missed that, go ahead and check it out. I'll put a card in the top right. But today we are just going to continue with that idea of getting ready for the launch and we're actually just going to create a nice little icon for our application. Uh, at the moment the app looks fine and you know it, it works well but when you look at it on the actual screen here we just have the regular uh, you know little default project here for the icon and then the simple M dot 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 so we're just going to clean a couple of this stuff up here and the fastest way and the best way that I can uh, show you to create a legitimate icon here is just searching Android app icon generator and then selecting the second one here that is a part of the uh, one of the guys at Google who seems to have made this entire platform that has a handful of other tools you can use to generate the correct icons and nine patch generators and all this kind of good stuff so it's really really helpful here but for the launch icon we can uh, just click on that and then I do have an image here so I will click image up here however you can do just straight text here with a particular font there is the clip art option that has all of just you know these standard stuff here uh, if you really wanted to have an app with app icon with that but again the image just kind of provides the best for you so I'm just gonna go ahead and find this image really quickly okay and so something to note here is that it's usually works best to have a square image so I have cropped the image that I found that is going to just, you know, to a square, 720 by 720. And then there are a few things to note here. So there are basically two shapes that we need to support for our icons. And we need the square shape and we also need the circle shape here. Uh, we then need to just name our launcher icons the different names, I guess, that the system is expecting. Uh, but they're pretty similar. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So we selected an image. We are just going to leave the trim alone. And then uh, we're going to start with the circle image or the circle shape here. And what I discovered for this particular image is that it actually works nicely. You can kind of slide this padding around to, you know, center your image inside the icon. But if I go ahead and set this all the way to negative 10 padding, it actually makes it look like a much more immersive icon here as opposed to, you know, having this little black border. And then obviously there's this other issue of the other border or the background color, which we would be able to get rid of if we just simply click the white image here. Now it just looks like, or white color, it just looks like one cohesive image here as the icon. However, I honestly think that this just looks like a, a better icon and I'm gonna go with that. With that said here, we are going to leave the shape as a circle and then instead of icy launcher, we're just going to do underscore round and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, any of this, it doesn't really work because of the way that we're other than the score it doesn't really work because of how zoomed in we are on the image but you could play around with that and then there's this brilliant see all which is just really nice I'm not too worried about the web image here but you'll be able to see the XXH DPI all the way down to the M DPI how these icons are going to be generated what they're going to look like at those different densities so everything here looks pretty good and we're going to go ahead and just download this zip which is great we have our IC launcher and then on top of that here, we're uh, just going to collapse that and then let's get our square one up and running. So um, here it obviously doesn't look as good. We don't have the ability to kind of get rid of that entire thing here. So we're just going to back it off a little bit and just kind of make it pretty uh, normal looking. Let's see, is there any? Yeah, so I mean, black, it doesn't look horrible. I mean, I guess we could do like theme it with like the green, but the white just looks best because then it just looks like this is the only part of it. So we're just going to leave it like that. Yeah, maybe we'll zoom in a tiny bit more. Um, and then we will leave square and then we're going to take off this underscore round. So it's just going to be named IC launcher. Let's give all these other ones a different view here. Uh, this is important though, this web image in the square shape here, this 512 by 512 resolution is gonna be important because we are going to need that for our Google Play Store listing. So make sure that this looks clean and clear. 
that is a, a pretty important part to the puzzle. And then otherwise here, the actual icons themselves, again, at these different densities for the square, look great as well. So we're just simply gonna go ahead and download this zip as well. Uh, looks like I have a multiple here. So let me just clean this up inside of our finder. All right, so I've gone ahead and cleaned up these uh, zip folders here. I've gone ahead and actually extracted them here. And so if we go ahead and take a look at them, we'll see here the IC launcher without the underscore round has inside of it a res and then all of the different MIP map folders here that have the different icons at the different densities right here. And if we go ahead and just quickly open one of them, you'll see how clean and clear that looks. And then I guess if we go to the MDPI, you see how fuzzier that looks. So the tool here has gone ahead and generated all the different densities that we need. Again, we saw that. And then basically the round folder does the exact same thing here. And it just allows us to, you know, see the round again, the HDPI with the XXX will actually look pretty good there, pretty crisp, pretty clear. So everything here is great. And the reason that this is such a powerful tool is because this pattern here that the tool has gener generated for us actually matches directly what we need for our Android Studio project. So if we go ahead and take a look at our project layer here, we can go ahead and kind of close the, um, we're gonna need that, but we're gonna go ahead and close all the other Java stuff and we're going to look inside of our resource directory and then specifically we have inside here all of the different MIP map uh, folders that correspond to the different densities here. And if we quickly open this up here, we'll see that they are just this basic generic you know icon that the uh, project comes with here. So this structure here that we see in this little project view directly mimics the structure that we see here inside of our uh, little, what the tool has put together for us. So I'm just gonna copy this res folder right here and we're just going to paste it right here. And then, which one was that, was that the round? No. So then I'm gonna copy the, uh, let's copy all of these folders here. And then if we go inside here and paste them all, we get this little option, we're going to apply to all and we are going to merge. So now we see in each one of these folders, we have the IC launcher underscore round and then just the IC launcher. They are all set up for the correct densities and whatnot. So basically this exact structure that we have here is ready to be dragged and dropped into our uh, Android Studio setup. So again, we will just copy all of these different folders that exist here. I'm gonna open up terminal down here inside of our Android Studio. I'm going to click open period so that we get into our project directory and then inside of our app source main resource folder, we are going to see all of these MIP map uh, different folders that have you know exactly what we see behind here, what we've discussed. So inside of the res here, if we just command V and paste, we have all of these folders in our clipboard. So we're going to apply to all and we are going to say replace. And what this is gonna do is now when we take a look at these different MIP map folders, we now see the icon that we actually care about, the icon that we want here. So uh, that's just wonderful how easily that drops in. And when we go back to Android Studio here, we can see that all of these folders have been updated, all these files specifically, they follow the exact same naming pattern, so we don't need to change any of the code here. Uh, they are all blue, they're all modified, and we can just see the exact icon that we want here. So if we just go ahead and rerun this really quickly, we should see a new icon. And so I apologize, there are a few other things that we just need to clean up here, the Andy, PIV26 folder, we can actually just go ahead and completely remove this folder. Uh, where is the delete option here? I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And then it was making use of this launcher background file, which we can then go ahead and delete. And also the foreground, which is inside of this package here, or this folder. So we can go ahead and just delete that as well. And so now once we have all of that auto-generated stuff out of the way here. We now have just our raw launcher PNGs here that are going to be set on our uh, devices here to be the icons for the application. And so once this starts to run again, we'll see this icon update here. Now we might have to close the app to see it, but we will see the icon at the home screen will now be updated to what we want. And so the app is open here and it is rerunning. And now we see this nice new application or sorry, it's a nice new icon that we have uh, been building towards right here. So the uh, real quick, the reason that we need to have the round support and then the uh, launcher support here, just the regular uh, image is because of the way that Android works and because of the way that certain things are set up inside the manifest. 
So inside the manifest here, there is a new attribute uh, in earlier project or more recent projects called the round icon. And that is where we go ahead and define the mipmap IC launcher round, whereas the traditional icon is just going to be at mipmap IC launcher. So what we're trying to do is tell the system here, and it even has this little tooltip in the sidebar, you know, if we're looking for just the icon, here it is. If we're looking for the round icon, uh, here it is. Here's where you can find it. And this is basically to just support varying versions of Android. Older versions of Android or older devices will not have the round icon support. Instead, it will have the square icon support. Um, and then I believe certain versions or certain devices even allow you to change between what kind of icon you want, whether it's a rounded square or just a circle. So uh, we need to supply all the information so that we can support devices you know, far, far back and then anything new uh, that comes out here. So it is pretty straightforward because we have everything defined the same name. It's pretty easy to just copy and paste things in. And then you see here that it just, yeah, here we go. So it just refers to mipmap at that particular um, file name. And it's up to the system to determine exactly which icon is going to be used based upon the device uh, screen density and all that good stuff. So because everything's just named the same and in different folders, uh, the system will take care of actually applying the correct icon onto the screen. So that's about it for the icon here. Uh, it is pretty straightforward because of that tool. Again, I will link it in the description and we can definitely make use of it. And then otherwise here, we're running into this issue of simple space m dot dot dot. And that is because again, inside of our manifest file, we have the label attribute here set to at string app name. Uh, okay, I guess we just had random stuff in here which is defined in here as just simple Morty. And this is used in a few different places, uh, yeah, inside the manifest, inside of our one of our layouts and whatnot. So we could just go ahead and duplicate this and let's say app name uh, home screen. Sure, let's be, let's be verbose here. And I think we're just gonna update this to just say Morty or maybe like, I don't know, R and M. Nah, let's just go with Morty, sure that uh, that'll stick out for sure. And so we will just take this screen res or string resource, excuse me, go back into our manifest file and just update the label here very simply. Uh, and then when we go ahead and rerun the application, we will no longer have simple Morty on this tag. It'll just be Morty. And then everywhere else that was referencing the app name string resource will just remain the same, will remain untouched here. So the application here is up and running. It's coming to the foreground and loading, doing its thing. And if we go back to our uh, home screen here, we simply see Morty, that's wonderful, and then if we open it up here, we see simple Morty right here, which was where it was being used inside of the header. So I think that will about do it for this episode here. We have gone ahead and updated our icons here for all the different support for the different devices, the different densities, and we made use of this really wonderful tool uh, that is, again, just a blessing to have. So I'll have this linked in the description so you guys can find it quite easily. And then uh, again, we just kind of cleaned up this little uh, launcher text here as well, just as another step in the right direction to prepare this application for the Google Play Store. So I do think either in the next episode or in the next few episodes, we're gonna go ahead and actually publish this to the App Store. And then if you are watching this and you are following this tutorial, you can see it in the App Store and actually download it and have it run on your own device. So I think that would be really fun. And that'll do it for me here. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. Uh, let me know how I'm doing in the comment section below. It'd be great to have a little bit of a conversation going. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, and we can change course accordingly. Uh, and if you notice you are not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I am going to continue pushing out content here. And even once we're done with this Morty application, I have a few other ideas for things in mind for tutorials around Android. So there will be plenty more content to come and I hope you stick along with me. With that said, have a good rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.